contender in our countdown of the most extreme slime balls spends its whole life fishing. For thousands of years, humans have been using fishing nets to catch creatures living underwater. There's another animal that also catches its prey in a fine mesh. However, it doesn't construct a web out of rope or nylon. Its enormous net is made from a great big ball of snot. It may look like a slimy plastic bag floating in the sea, but it's actually the home of a tiny animal called a larvation. This tadpole-like creature has glands on its head that produce masses of mucus very much like the slime that runs out of your nose. Imagine if we used our snot to live like a larvation. It would be like an average guy generating enough mucus to weave a snot balloon over 1,000 feet wide. The house would be built in two layers. The outer layer would have a coarse mesh that stops bigger particles of debris from clogging up the fine inner mesh. This traps the smaller particles of food. And when there's too much garbage stuck in the outer layer, we would simply swim away and leave it to sink to the ocean depths. If we were like larvations, we'd be building a new mucus balloon at least every 24 hours, which requires an awful lot of snot. While humans may not be able to match the sheer volume of slime produced by a larvation, it's disturbing to learn that our bodies are covered in an awful lot of gooey secretions. One of the slimiest parts of your body is the palm of your hand. An area the size of a postage stamp contains 3,000 sweat glands, each oozing a gooey cocktail of water and more than 350 different chemical compounds. disgusting, but there is one animal that's attracted to the ingredients in our slime. Researchers from Yale University have discovered our sweat contains a chemical that's a big turn-on for mosquitoes. Just a whiff of human sweat is enough to trigger a feeding frenzy. not surprising that mosquitoes have a thing for your sweaty socks. Especially since your foot secretions are food for bacteria living in your skin. It's their waste products that make our feet stink. And guess what? These smelly chemicals also draw mosquitoes like a magnet. So, the moral of the story is, in mosquito country, make sure you wear a nice clean pair of socks, and be sure to cover your feet when you're sleeping outdoors. While scientists have no trouble finding mosquitoes for their experiments, it's far more difficult to collect a fragile house of snot. At the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, it takes a skilled pilot to get a remote-operated vehicle anywhere near a larvation without destroying its delicate home. Analysis has shown that when the discarded net falls to the seafloor, 
there's yet another use for the slime. The balls of snot continue to trap anything in their path. And that's why the strange creations of the larvation are number five in the countdown. By effectively doubling the amount of food arriving on the seafloor, they're supporting not just one animal, but hundreds of scavengers at the bottom of the sea. all over the place? All this foam would be truly disgusting if it had come from a human mouth. But these slimy bubbles have been blown out of a bug's bottom. Meet the spittle bug. When it's young, this sap-sucking insect has a soft body that's easily damaged by sun and wind, so it uses slime to protect itself. As it feeds, the bug excretes undigested plant sap and mixes it with an abdominal secretion similar to egg whites. Then, it blows bubbles into the mixture using a special valve on its abdomen. The Spittlebug's house of bubbles provides protection against not only the climate. Living inside spit is great camouflage, and the slime contains so many nasty chemicals that it deters most predators. We may not cover our bodies in spit, but we do have sebaceous glands that secrete an oily slime to prevent our skin from drying out. Unfortunately, this coating doesn't give us protection from harmful ultraviolet rays. Before 1936, prolonged exposure to the sun meant we got burnt. And then, along came the founder of the cosmetics firm, Moriel. French chemist Eugene Schuler is said to have invented the first sunscreen. These solutions contain molecules that either block or absorb ultraviolet rays before they can penetrate our skin. Hidden inside its blob of frothy sunscreen, a young spittlebug is perfectly safe from the sun and predators. But it's only a temporary home, because when it molts into its adult form, its tough exoskeleton provides all the protection it needs. However, as our countdown continues, will meet creatures that have to have slime all the time. Home sweet home for our last two contenders meant living in spit or snot. Things don't get any less disgusting when we meet a slimy maggot that goes fishing for flies. And later, how'd you like to have spit that glows in the dark? <laughs> 